All right, Shalom, Shalom. First off, I want to give all honor and glory to Yahweh, Baha Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Hashem, Racha HaKodash, Level of Yom. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, who teach me one of his last days, and who are the true leaders of the nation of Israel. I want to give a strong Shalom to the occupant of the four corners of the earth, persons born in truth and sincerity, making the call and lesson sure. And I want to give a humble salutation to the whole for the lake, tuning in on the four corners of the earth, wherever habitation may be at. This is Brother Mashal, come back at you with a quick lesson to the spirit power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. I want to thank the Wadi Yahweh Bashim Yahweh for giving the spirit and having mercy for allowing me to teach a sheep. And um, I want to go into this lesson. I just uh, thought about while just playing with my children. And um, I'm going to talk to this lesson. I thought, uh, <clears throat> but that's the Old Testament. You know what I'm saying? You know, you got, you always have these uh, holy rollers. You know what I'm saying? That, uh, you know, that that basically cast off the Old Testament because the New Testament roll around, not knowing that this is just one complete book. You know, throughout 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 history. All right, we have the the uh, the the the, the uh, letters. You know, the uh, the Torah from the beginning. You know, and then you have all the way up to, <clears throat> you know, uh, the apostles and Yahweh Shai, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, right in, in, you know, in, in the apostle Paul and all, you know, uh, you know, to, to write these letters for, for, for the elect in the last days. All right. So this book, this whole complete book is a, is a, is a book, a collection of letters and a collection of, uh, books um, for f over a period of time and over history, all right, it's no separation, all right. So uh, you know, you got, like I say, you have these holy, holy rollers, like you know, always saying, well, you know, well that's the Old Testament. Well, the Old Testament is the New Testament, and the New Testament is the Old Testament because all the apostles did, and Yahweh Shai did was reiter reiterate from the old from, from the Old Testament, so-called Old Testament. All right. So first off, we're going to start off with. Um, Uh, so like here, we're going to start off with um, so like here, let's start off with Isaiah 66 alright Isaiah 66 and verse 1 it says, thus saith Yahweh Bashim Yashai the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool alright, where is the house where you, where, uh, that you build unto me and where is the place of my rest? You see? So what 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 does this mean, man? This means that the most high and Yahweh Shai is not dealing with these with these uh these churches, man, these uh synagogues. Okay. These houses that that, that are being built are these 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 modern day churches, man. These modern day these modern day uh prayer houses. Why? Because there's no truth in these in these houses. Okay? And where is the place of my rest? All right, because Yahweh Shai and Yahweh, uh, play, play, their place of rest is in the heavens. So what type of house can you build, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man? All right, so now let's get this in the uh, in the in the New Testament, so-called New Testament, in uh, Acts uh, seven, verse seven. And let's start at verse uh, 47. Let's start at verse 46. It says, Who found favor before the Heavenly Father and desired to find a tabernacle for the, for the power of Jacob. Verse 47, But Solomon built him a house. All right, so King Solomon originally uh, built the temple for Yahweh Bashim Yahshua, okay? But that was ransacked. And that was destroyed. And now the house of the Heavenly Father is being rebuilt. The third temple is being rebuilt through the Spirit. All right. Now the third temple is, is the uh, the tabernacle of David. Okay. That's the house that's being rebuilt right now. All right. So it says, uh, verse 48, how be it the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands. As saith the prophet. So see, that's, that Isaiah said this. 
Okay, the Most High is not dwelling in, 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 in your church. The Most High is not dwelling in the synagogues. That's why the scriptures scripture say the temple of the Heavenly Father dwelleth in you, man. Okay? It says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What, what house will you build me? That's the same thing Isaiah said. Says the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Have not my hands made all these things? You see, so the Yahweh Bashimashah's hands made all of these things. So what type of, why would you try to put them in a box, man? Okay. So the Most High doesn't dwell in these in these temples. Why? Because it's, that's, it says the same thing that it says in the Old Testament. It says in the New Testament. All right. We just gonna, we just gonna, man, we're gonna get, get get some random stuff. Uh, Leviticus uh, twenty and thirteen, just some random stuff. All right, Leviticus twenty thirteen. It says this is the Old Testament. What the Old Testament is done away with, though, bro. It says if a man also lie with mankind, as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. All right. So if a man also lies with mankind, is lies with a woman. They have committed an abomination. All right, so that's that, this is uh, when you when you uh, deal with the same gender. Hold on one second. Hey, what I say? All right, slack so Um, it says if if man if a man also lie with mankind. As he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. All right. So see, when 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 now we have all these uh, pride, pr gay pride parades and all type of all type of stuff. You know, this is where it's going to be. Uh, you know, this is the 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 hypocrisy of people because most of these the LGB. Uh, LGBTQT com community got big crosses on their necks, man. All right, so let's get this in the New Testament, man, because the Old Testament is a New Testament, and the New Testament is the Old Testament. Uh, Romans one. Romans one. And 25, it says, Who changed the truth of the Heavenly Father into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever? Amen. All right, so so people have worshiped and served the creature, right, which is man, right, more than the Creator, which is the one who created everyone, which is the Haobashim Yashat. Okay? So we've, so we've, we've been going backward. Our thinking of it has been uh, uh, tossed upside down. So now we worship and serve the creature. Now we 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 uh, we listen to Esau's laws about homosexuality than the Creator's laws, which we already just w went to in uh, Leviticus tw uh, twenty and thirteen. All right, it says, "For this cause, the heavenly Father gave them up to vile affections. For what? For even their women, they changed the natural use." And to that which is against nature. So the natural uh, use of a woman is to bring children uh, into the world. Okay? But now, what do you do? What, what, what do women do? They do things that's against nature. What is that? That's, uh, you know, um, you know, what, 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 uh, what women do, man. You know, the, uh, I don't want to get graphic or nothing like that, but, you know, let uh, let uh, well the L community, you know, uh, they do all type of uh, wickedness, man. You know what I'm saying? That any everything that's against nature. All right. So you can you can you, you I mean we're all adults here. We know what what uh, what, uh lesbo women do. All right. So everything that the lesbian women do is what is against nature, man. Okay. That's not the that that's not the natural use of a woman. Okay. It says, and likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman. See, the men have left the natural use of a woman. 
Okay, and that's why it says that if, if a man lies with mankind, as he lies with a woman. You see, so men have left the natural use of the woman. Okay, it says that um, back in Leviticus, it says that they have committed abomination. So when you when you when you leave the natural use, which is set up by Yahabash and Yashai, and create your own uh, ways, all right, you've you've committed an abomination, man. When the women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, man, that's an abomination. All right, so it says, and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust towards one another. See, because that's lust. Okay. Men with men work in that which is unseemly. All right, we're gonna we're gonna get these words and and, and I'm gonna finish up this uh uh this passage <clears throat> and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error. See, it's an error when you uh when when a man is with a man and a woman is with a woman. That's that's a that's a complete error, man. Of Yahweh Bashim Yashai. And this is in the New Testament, man. Everybody wants to run to Paul for, uh, you know, uh, for edification, where they 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 neglect the words of Yahweh Shai, they neglect the words of the prophets, and like I say, it's all one book, man. Which was meat, all right. So let's get a couple of these uh, definitions. Let's get um, let's get lust, because it says it was leaving the natural use of the woman burning their lust. Strong's G, 3715, Oryxis, Oryxis. Okay, uh, desire, longing, craving for, eager desire, lust, appetite. All right, uh, use both in a good and bad sense. Why? Because you can lust after the, after the scriptures, man. You can have a, a, a desire and a craving and a longing for the scriptures, man, for righteousness. This is why it says you can. It's being used as a good. I mean, it could it could be used as a good and bad sense. Okay. It says uh, as well of a natural and lawful or even proper cravings. So we we crave the we cra the elect crave the truth, man. The elect crave righteousness. Okay. We lust after it. Okay. But on the other end, on the, and there's a bad sense, also of corrupt and what unlawful desires. You see, so everything ter turns back into the Old Testament, man, the so-called Old Testament. So we see that it that that it's been, uh, you know, it talks about these things in the in the so-called Old Testament and the so-called New Testament. Now let's let's look, let's get unseemly real quick. Strong's G eight oh eight Aschemasune Aschemasune. Okay, unseemly unseemliness, unseemly deed, a woman's genitals. Uh, this is the definition we want. A of one's nakedness, shame. Okay. So it's a shameful thing to do these things, man. Alright, and that nakedness. Is what happened when uh, Adam and Eve were naked, man. When you, when you how about you, I said told uh, told you uh, when they told Adam and Eve when at when Slaka when you how about you, Masha, told Adam and Eve who told you you were naked. All right, because why? Because they were they were a period of, they were shameful because they they had that transgressed the the word. In the in the in the uh, in the instructions of Yahweh Bashim Yashai. Okay, so they were naked, man. That's why Yahweh Shai always says to keep blessed is those that keep his garments, the spiritual garments. So you won't be spiritually naked, spiritually uncovered. You know what I'm saying? Spiritually vulnerable. <coughs> All right. So this is this is uh, unseemly. Okay. All right, so uh, yeah, so you know, being a, being a mo is talking about is talked about in the Old Testament and the new, in the New Testament. So next time you go to your church, or you know somebody that goes to the church, goes to church, you know what I'm saying, most high willing, everybody's listening listening to this lesson is uh, out of out of all that garbage. 
you know what I'm saying? But, you know, if you know somebody in church, you know, it's always one into the, you know, the epistles of Paul. What about this? What about this right here? Right? Let's go to um Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61 and verse 1. It says, The spirit of Yahweh, Allah is upon me because Yahweh Bashim Al Shai hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and opening to the prisons to them that are bound. And see, we we, we are these people, man. We are we are in our prison, man. We are in our prison sentence. We're serving our prison sentence right now. Okay, we are the captives, right? We are the brokenhearted. All right, we are the meek. Okay, verse two, to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahweh Shemashai and the vengeance, as like in the day of vengeance of our power to comfort all that mourn, man, and we're in mourning. See, and this is in the, in the next verse. It says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. All right, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of Yahweh Bashim Hashai, that he may be glorified. All right, we're going to stop there, but you can read, uh, you know, all the way through. Um, and let's get this in the New Testament, man, because that's what Yahweh Shai uh, uh, talked about, man. Uh, Luke 4. Luke 4 and... Uh, start of verse 17 and and there it was delivering him unto him the book of the prophet uh Is Isaiah, which is isaiah in greek all right what we just read in isaiah uh, 61 it says and we had opened the book he found the place where it was written okay so what what do you how would i do he he read precept upon precept line upon line here a little and there a little he didn't just go through the whole chapter all right why because he had to he already had to understand it man that's what we do okay but he found the, the place where it was written the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives recovering of sight to the blind uh to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of you have, of, of the Lord. All right. And he closed the book and he gave it. Let's let it's, it's powerful. It says, and he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. You see, so the new Testament is really the, the fulfillment, the fulfillment of a lot of things in the Old Testament. Okay, so this is all this this is all it is, man. Just real, just something real quick, man. You know that the Old Testament and the New Testament is all one book because the Howard and Apostles. You know what? Real quick, um, what's that? Uh, Acts. Uh, twenty four and let me see. 24 24 and 14 it says but this i confess unto thee at, that after the way which they call heresy right so i worship uh so worship i the power of my fathers doing what and what does paul do believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. See, Paul believed in, in, in that's what he taught. He believed all things that were written in the, that were written of the law and in the prophets, man. In the Tanakh. And the Tanakh is the confirmation uh, the comprising of the the books of Moses, the first five books, the Torah, and the prophets. That's called the Torah. I mean it's like that's called the Tanakh. 
Okay? So Paul believed all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. Okay? So this is why Paul said in uh what's that, Romans seven, that he was taught that he spoke to the people that that, that knew the law. Alright? Romans seven. And verse one, know ye not, brethren, for what happened? For I speak to them that know the law. You see, this is in the New Testament. How that the law have dominion over man as long as he liveth. Okay? So, when the scriptures say, real quick, um, in Baruch 4, It says, this is the book of the commandments of the Heavenly Father and the law that endureth forever, man. All that all they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. Okay? So this is the law that endureth forever, man. So this is why Paul said, how the Know you not, brethren, how the law, how that the law have to mean over a man as long as he lives. Why? Because the law endure forever. And Paul was speaking to them that know the law. And this is why when we have this, because this is this is uh the, the apocrypha is in between the New Testament and the Old Testament, so-called, because it's just a, a period of history. Okay? So we have the, the law that endure forever, but what does it take to get into the kingdom of heaven, man? Revelation 22 and 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Why? Because the law endure forever. All that keep it shall come to life. You see? But such as leave it shall die. So all that keep this law that endures forever shall come to life. See? So blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to what? The tree of what? Of the tree of life. The kingdom of heaven. All right? The, when, you do the, when you do the commandments, you're gonna, you, you'll be able to have right to the tree of life, man, that everlasting life. When you keep these commandments that endure forever, all right? You're going to, you're going to keep it. You're going to come to life, man, that everlasting life. It may enter in through the gates into the city. Okay. And that city is the kingdom of heaven, man. All right. So I don't want to make this too long. Uh, most I will and such was edifying. All right. So th there's no such thing as the old Testament, the new Testament, the apocrypha. It's all one book. It's just been labeled that way. Okay. There's no old Testament without the new Testament. There's no Apocrypha without the Old Testament, and there's no New Testament without the Apocrypha. Okay? Because you won't, uh, most I will, I'll get, I'll get to a lesson about uh, the Gentiles, all right? Because the Gentiles in the New Testament are found in the Apocrypha. And this is why you don't have the Apocrypha in your, in your neighborhood friendly church, right? Because they, they teach you that the Gentiles are you. They think that the that the Gentiles are everybody. Everybody, everybody in the scriptures has been done away with, and we and we're and we're Gentiles. All right, so that's a lie. So most high one of us was edifying. We give all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahushai, Bahashem Racha Hakodash Lavlam Yom. Double honor to the elders and the pots of Great Millstone. I'm gonna say Kwame Sharala, Ababa Ball, Shalom.